Hello everybody, I want to go over a little bit today about the uh, aspects of uh, cutlery uh, for your survival needs. Um, mostly I want to do this because there's a lot of people out there uh, that have some uh, fanciful ideas uh, regarding what you really need for survival cutlery. Um, some people have uh, dozens and dozens of knives and uh, different things they can use for cutting. Uh, but you really don't need that many different types of items. Uh, bottom line is, is you can you can get by with a pocket jack knife if you really want to. Uh, having other types of cutlery uh, certainly helps you out. Uh, but I'm going to go over today a little bit about uh, some of the stuff that I carry, uh, not only on every day, but for uh, that I have on hand for uh, survival and evac situations. Um, first one, I have this one that I've had quite a while. Um, it's an old uh, MAS cutlery um, knife. Um, looks kind of like an old-fashioned razor type of blade. Um, I do have a couple of these on hand. Um, and yes, you can shave with them. They're sharp enough for that if you keep them sharp. Uh, but this one is what I carry in my pocket all the time. It's a good little folder. It's uh, nice and light. It's stainless steel so it doesn't rust out. But this is my everyday carry. I keep it with me all the time. Uh, next up, of course, uh, for everyday carry, um, I have my SOG, uh, which is a multi-tool, uh, very versatile. Uh, you'll see that there are crimpers in there that you can use for uh, crimping fishing uh, weights and whatnot, uh, various different things. It has uh, some different uh, uh, attachments here, tools. Um, you have a file uh, that you can use for filing things. It has a nice uh, screwdriver uh, that you can use for prying things up with if you need to or tightening screws. It has a P38 type of can opener. Uh, number one, uh, this is one of the things I wish was different about this particular item I have. Is I wish that was a number two Phillips, not a number one. Um, I understand you can uh, actually get uh, uh, add-on blades that you can exchange out with that. This is a kind of a, a bottle opener type uh, screwdriver uh, tool with an awl and then a saw for sawing. This I don't carry on my belt with me all the time uh, except for when I'm uh, going off the beaten path. Uh, but I do have a, uh, uh, a knife blade in here uh, with a straight and serrated edge uh, that you can use for sawing. A very sharp blade very good quality. Uh, get a screwdriver, bottle opener. Um, you also have a little tool in there uh, that you can use for uh, uh, putting quarter inch sockets on. also has a, a webbing and strap cutter which you can use for uh, it's intended to be used for slicing seat belts but you can use it for other things too. Uh, it's a good little cord cutter. Uh, has a lanyard on here that you can also uh, use for uh, putting a uh, uh, a string around if you want to uh, tie it around your wrist. Um, but I always carry this with me all the time. Uh, next up that I have for frequent use is my hobo knife. Um, this actually comes apart in two halves. Um, and this one is, uh, is pretty readily available. But you get a spoon and a fork. Uh, you also have a knife uh, you can use for cutting that uh, uh, stick that you have if you need to. Um, have a little awl in here uh, that you can use for making holes if you need to. Uh, this end has a uh, can opener similar in style to the uh, a P38. Um, this doesn't work as well as that in a bottle opener. And a corkscrew in case you want to uh, include a uh, bottle of wine in your survival supplies. Uh, this also goes with me when I'm off going off the trail. Um, and also on long trips I keep it in my uh, bug out bag which I take with me uh, when I'm going traveling in my car for any long distance. You never know what's going to happen. Um, also have a folding knife. This is a, uh, I know, a cheapo Winchester model. It's stainless steel. Um, it's a heavy knife. It does some good cutting. You have both a uh, serrated edge here uh, that you can use for sawing and cutting rough stuff. Uh, it's good for cutting through bone. Um, and then you have your uh, straight edge knife. Um, 
which you can use for uh, skinning, cutting up meat and whatnot, dressing a fish if you need to. Um, it's a little rough for dressing a fish. Uh, for that reason, I also have this one, stainless steel. Uh, this is my fishing knife. It's got a nice long point to it. Um, you can uh, slide up the belly of that uh, uh, little uh, uh, beauty that you've caught and uh, gut it and clean it right up with it. Um, and this I carry with me as along with this one uh, when I'm going out fishing. Uh, but I also carry it with me when I'm going off the beaten path. Next knife that I have up is my old uh, Provident Cutlery. Um, it was made uh, quite a number of years ago. Um, I'm told uh, uh, it's probably older than I am, which I wouldn't be surprised, but um, I believe it was sold uh, during the early 50s um, at various places. Um, it's a uh, Stag Hunter is the name of it, or Tough Stag Ultra Honed, as they like to uh, call it. It's got a very good blade, high carbon steel. Um, this goes with me whenever I'm going off the trail, uh, period. Uh, no exceptions because you never know when you're going to need it. If I'm going heavily off the trail, um, I also carry a couple of different things. I have this uh, a Corona machete. Um, has a sawback blade, which is good for uh, cutting. Um, one of these days I'm going to put it on a, uh, a file and I'm going to put a better teeth on these. These are kind of uh, flattened out on the top. I don't know how good you can see that in the video, but uh, this is good for cutting your way through uh, tangles of brush and uh, whatnot. Uh, handy. Um, you can also put a uh, lanyard through there if you want to. Um, I haven't bothered. I don't know whether I will or not. Um, I've never really had a need for uh, lanyards on any of my equipment. So, uh, But this is uh, a nice machete. Uh, worth having in your pack. Uh, probably my... Uh, uh, queen of my uh, cutlery is this uh, True Temper Axe that I bought a couple of years ago. Uh, it has a nice head on here for pounding. Uh, you can remove nails and stuff if you come across an old cabin. Uh, but this is solid, one piece steel, uh, drop forged, uh, very good quality, um, nice edge to it. Um, it keeps sharp very well. Uh, so it has a, a fairly decent uh, level of uh, carbon to it. Uh, because it does keep that edge. Now you'll find with a lot of the ones with lower carbon is that you have a harder time keeping the edge on that when you sharpen them up. Uh, but this, um, all told, uh, this, all of this cost me less than a hundred bucks. Uh, this is about thirty-five dollars. This one cost me new about, uh, uh, I think it was like twenty or twenty, somewhere between twenty and twenty-five. Um, this one I bought used at a nice at a yard sale um, probably uh, 30 years ago now um, I believe I paid five dollars for it at the time uh, this hobo knife was uh, about four dollars at uh, Walmart uh, this one of course was my most expensive one and this is what brings it up to a hundred dollars as this cost me about forty something dollars with the tax on sale uh, they normally go for up to 60 uh, but I got it at a, a Christmas clearance. So you're looking at, with these, about $100. Um, this I paid, I think, $3 for um, at a, uh, a mass merchandiser that was having a really big sale. Um, and the two of these I actually bought wholesale. I used to be in the knife business. Um, so I paid uh, roughly about a buck a piece for them on the wholesale um, end of it. Um, I'm not in the knife business anymore. Uh, uh, someday I may get into it, but um, at the moment, uh, not now. Um, but that's my uh, that's my assortment of cutlery that I use for uh, uh, my survival and uh, preparedness needs. Um, they're all good blades. Um, I don't have any real high-end expensive blades. Um, you can get them if you want to. Um, I don't need to. Um, I have skills and uh, abilities that a lot of homeowners uh, that never get out into the woods would never have. Uh, not that I'm downing those people that don't, uh, but uh, one of the important things you need to remember when you're dealing with skill sets um, is the fact that uh, your knowledge is your knowledge and not somebody else's. Um, so what you have to do 
as you go through life is uh, you need to develop your skill sets. Um, you need to learn what you can do with what you have um, and also learn what everybody else is doing so that you can uh, learn what they have and you can build upon that uh, and thereby develop your skill sets. Um, but again, this doesn't weigh much. Um, you're looking at probably 10 pounds max, including the hatchet, which is the heaviest item. Um, probably not even quite that, but I'm just guesstimating here. Uh, but that's really all you need for cutlery. Uh, you don't need scores and scores of blades hanging around. Uh, if you take care of them, uh, they're going to give you a good long life. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, uh, losing the edge on a quality piece of steel. It uh, doesn't matter where, the, where that steel came from. It could be imported, uh, it could be made here in the United States, but it's the quality of the steel uh, that you want to look at. Uh, some differences between the knives is uh, a lot of them today are stainless steel, uh, which has a lower carbon content. Uh, the problem with stainless steel is that it does not hold an edge as long as um, a high carbon steel will. And uh, uh, they're also harder to keep that edge on there once you get them. Um, you tend to get a lot of microscopic nicks on it even just by brushing it against something. So, uh, But in another video we'll uh, get into some more of that uh, cutlery information. Uh, one video I have coming up that I'm working on is uh, taking care of your blades and I go over a bunch of different tips and hints on sharpening. So t stay tuned for that one and until then, uh, happy prepping.